doesn't mean that you can't build there or you can't do things there, but anything that's done in the core zone should be done in consultation with UNESCO because you can risk doing something that might affect the integrity and the authenticity of the site. So if we look in terms of Khoi An, um, with, um, with uh, Tang Hoa province, there's a World Heritage Site Ho Citadel in Tang, in, in Tang Hoa province. I haven't been there. It's an archaeological site. So it's not something you go and say, wow, look at these beautiful buildings or a beautiful temple or a beautiful... It's an, it's an archaeology site. But also within the core zone, there are people living there. And so we talked, Tang Hoa is, 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 is complaining a little bit because they say, listen, we don't have the right to, to do anything even for the road because of these, of these, these issues. And so we, we talked to them and we said, actually, it's a little bit not as complicated as that. But what the thing that I said is that, look, first and foremost, if a designation, if UNESCO designation does not make the lives of the local community better, and if, then what's the purpose of the designation? It doesn't make any sense. And so that always the name that has to put the people's lives should come first. So in case of the building or anything in, like that in, uh, in Hoi An, Absolutely, development is possible, but it has to be just done in a way that doesn't compromise the integrity of the site. I'm sorry, because that doesn't necessarily answer your question. A high, a high rise building in the core zone? I don't think so, probably not. Because it would, it would, it would be difficult. It would, it would ruin the integrity of plan. Design does not really want to go. That would be that kind of card to um, solve the problems in land management in Vietnam in terms of education, science, and culture. You guys, tourism, the, the tourism is important in, for this for this university too, and it's one of our it's one of our priorities. So for the last four years, sustainable tourism for UNESCO, and and why when we UNESCO did a complete reboot of our strategy, country strategy in Vietnam four years ago, and sustainable tourism um, became a priority for us because we said okay, well we're involved in cultural heritage, we're involved in natural heritage, and if you are involved in the cultural or natural heritage of this country, you are immediately swept up into sustainable tourism because of the, the exponential growth of tourism and the opportunities that that provided, but also the challenges that it provided for the, for the cultural heritage and also for the, 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 the natural heritage as well. I think for us, um, there's been a number of different things that we've been doing, um, and, but maybe the most important thing is, is actually just starting to happen. So we, 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 one of the first things that we, we, we tried to do was just to, to, to start to have a little bit more of a dialogue around sustainable tourism in the country. And we were really happy because um, um, former Prime Minister Fook uh, picked up on this. He, Prime Minister Fook was, um, was from Guangdong province. I don't know if he was originally from there, but he worked a lot in Guangdong province. And he was around for the development where Guangdong province really developed as a tourist hub. Um, and he was also involved in the, in the um, nomination of Hoi, uh, Hoi An and um, Misak World Heritage Sites. And so he asked for a national conference on, uh, to, to sort of for UNESCO to present to uh, key provinces the recommendations on sustainable tourism. So, so we did that. The other thing that we started after that was to do projects on sustainable tourism with, uh, with, with Halong and also, and also Trinidad. But, but it's also to sort of, there are projects which are oriented towards the local community. For us, sustainable tourism is tourism that helps the local community and helps local culture. The last thing that's starting to come out now is almost the most important. At the end of the day, it is the private sector which is developing the tourism sector. It is the private sector which is developing resorts and golf courses and everything else. I can talk. You can talk, we can talk as much as we like. The private sector acts, the private sector does. So, the, the, the key thing is, is, can we start to influence how the private sector thinks about investment? It's true, there, there has been, the private sector has done a lot of, I mean, what the private sector is, is, is the, the country wouldn't have developed with the private sector. But in the tourism sector, some projects have been good, some projects not so good, and some projects have been disastrous as we can see. But I always said, if we can influence players like Sobico, 
if we can influence players like Sandro, if we can influence players like Fingru, if we start to have them have another look at the sort of developments and investments that, we, that they make, then we change the game. And so this is actually, you saw Madame Tao from Sokoko Group. We now have a partnership with Sokoko Group. It is the first partnership established between the United Nations and a Vietnamese corporation in history. And so, Sovico, to a certain extent, is leading the way on a bit of a rethink within the private sector about how things are done. The private sector, like everybody else in this country, is starting to think, you know, wow, we've made a lot of money. Wow, a lot of money. But what is our legacy going to be? Maybe actually it's a little bit more than making money. How are we, how are we contributing to, to, to what, what, what legacy are we leaving the country? How will people think about us in the future? What are we doing for the cultural and spiritual development of the citizens of this of, of country? And so the private sector more and more starts to be open to, oh, tell, tell us more about sustainable development goals. So for instance, just to give you a concrete example, in a month's time, I and some of my team will go and we will sit with the CEOs of Sovico Group. Sovico Group represents HD Bank, Vietjet Airlines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we will discuss with them responsible business. We'll have a retreat and we're going to discuss about responsible business. Because Sovico Group starts to understand, like other business understand, sustainability isn't just, sustainability is the future of business. And if your business, and if your business is sustainable, your business is going to be, it, it, it's that, it's no longer just a sort of a charity thing or even a CSR thing. That sustainability is the key to success in future business. And so the leaders within the private sector in Vietnam now are opening up to this. Um, and so this is, this is something that actually I think, it's not a bad point to conclude on. Because in so many ways now, the private sector is now becoming open to becoming more of a partner in development. In tourism, in culture, in education as well. And so this is, this is, and so for us, this is what the Partnerships for Progress is all about. And I should probably thank you very much because that has actually been the perfect question in a way to kind of close on because it's, um, because it's, it, it's, it's very important, um, that, that connection with the private sector. So bringing the private sector in as a partner in sustainable development is key because at the end of the day, they're the ones who establish the facts of the ground. Thank you.